that is. Um, okay, so type that QC. <clears throat> With our process, I mean, you, see, you hear the word QC a lot. It happens at every single stage. There's composition QC, uh, there's a copy editing QC, uh, and not surprisingly, there is a type set QC. There's a couple things that we're going to kind of continue to check for whenever we do type set QC. It's a, it's a three step process. We're going to check the PDF. We're going to check, uh, well, and the PDF is a lot of visual checks. You're scrolling through the document, making sure that everything looks correct, is placed correct. Um, you'll be able to just sort of like scroll through visually, make sure everything is matching up with the design and is placed as you would expect it to. We're going to do some InDesign checks. So that involves making sure that all the styles are correct. That involves making sure that any of those sort of best practice things I mentioned, like, you know, no hard returns everywhere, called spacing. You're going to look at, like, kind of under the hood of the PDF and get a sense of how the thing is built and if there's any issues that have been introduced by the typesetter. And then we're going to do um, text checks, just like you saw Elvis do in Sublime in um, our composition QC. Uh, we're going to do the same thing in the InDesign QC. That will involve extracting XML from InDesign using the Scribe tools. That kind of gives us a preview of potential issues that we could see in the um, ebook phase. By doing this extraction early on, we can resolve anything. You know, if there's I mean, weird things in the file or if there's anything that's not styled correctly, the text will sort of get moved and placed in a different spot. So for now, I'm going to show everybody and send a link to where we're going to find a QC checklist. So I can bring you over here. So it lives on the ScribeNet page under Welcome Document Workflow, Documentation. And then scrolling down to Quality QC Checklists. And like I said, there's a bunch of them. We're going to hit Typeset QC. And I'll send this in the chat. Here we go. No, oh, that'll just beat me to it. So this is going to be a, kind of a guide for us as we're looking through the different files. And you'll see it's also split between things we check for in the PDF, things we check for in the InDesign, and things we check for in the text file. <clears throat> just like with um, what we did, the composition QC checks, these you can just sort of um, click that little button. It'll copy the text to your um, paste, and then you'll be able to paste it in Sublime. So, First things first, we want to uh, make the extraction so that we get an XML file. Um, files we're going to use for this portion. Um, and for right now, I'm going to kind of work through these real uh, step by step and then pass a different file off to you guys for, um, for your QC portion. Um, but for right now, I'm going to be using that same with the type setting INDD file in the PDF folder. There's already a OTN type setting. PDF. And then I'm going to run through that extraction steps that we've kind of referenced a couple points, but we're going to see where that, that lives. Um, the process occurs in our typesetting document, but we always want to make sure to save it as a new file. So you can go up to File, Save As, or for me it's you know, Command Shift S. And I always rename it Test. The reason we want to do this is because the extraction tools are going to place new things, they're going to um, kind of mess up your file, basically. It's going to look pretty gross by the end of it, but that's okay because we're just using this to pull text out of it to move on to the next stage. So I always put my test after it. And then again within the test file, I go back up to Scribe Tools, and we're going to run a um, prepare for export step. Now, um, for those of you who don't have the setup and need a little bit more help later, um, it's okay to kind of follow along at this point because there's going to be other things that we're going to check for uh, in the PDF and InDesign file later on. But for now, I'm going to choose Run All, Export XML without page indicators. We'll talk a little bit about what that means when I move to the XML portion of this. But for right now, in, in our heads, we're thinking, I need to extract XML because I'm going to make a text file that I'm going to run searches on for the last portion of my QC. So I need to do run all. So see, I kind of start thinking, start moving through the file. It's doing a lot of different things at this point. It's, it's mapping files to a DTD. It is um, 
removing all of those TSO styles we talked about. So anything tagged with TSO gets removed. Uh, it puts up a little overview here. And these are all the different steps that I ran through. If there's no problem, basically it's just going to say, I ran that tool. If there is a problem, you'll see an alert. Literally, the text will say alert, and it'll be on, for example, map styles to tags, and it'll say, I couldn't map this style. Often that means that the typesetter has introduced a non HTML um, style. And so we could have a thing that we, uh, an issue we talked about at the beginning where maybe uh, they wanted to make an alt style. We remember alt styles from the last session, and maybe they named it wrong. Maybe they didn't put a hyphen in, it was just AH alt. Well, that doesn't follow the pattern that the tools are looking for. So that doesn't get mapped. So it just becomes non-styled text in, the, in your document. Um, but this is just your opportunity to see, you know, is there any problem if you missed it? I'll close that and just kind of run you through. You can kind of see now our structure tags are visible. There's a lot of these different brackets of different colors throughout. And that's an indication that it's been mapped to a certain style. But again, just for the fact that, um, well, not again, I'll just say, just for the fact that it's changed the text, that's why we resaved the file as a new file, because this is no longer suitable for print. So I'm going to close it. Wherever that InDesign file lives that we uh, ran the test on, there's going to be a new file in the same folder uh, and named whatever your InDesign file name is, but with XML appended to the end of it. So for anyone who follows along, you now should have an XML file. We don't really do anything to that um, XML file. We don't open it. We don't work in it. It's just used as a stepping, process, stepping point to get to the next steps of files. So now uh, I want to make it into a SAM file. I'm going to go to the hub. I'm going to sign in. I'm going to enter any particular project. This is the exact reason that I have things like this test project for. I just need to run a conversion on this file. I'm going to upload that XML file that I just made here. Upload that. All right. Now I see there's our XML file under an XML in design XML um, section. Uh, screen, no problem. So now I just want to convert it from XML to IDTT, not IDTT, but to SAM. And this is a phase where we're, we're just kind of generating a couple dead end files that we use to run different searches on. I'm not going to do anything with the SAM file other than search for issues that could be in that InDesign document. And if I find any issues, I'm going to go back to the InDesign document and make changes or keep a list of things I find to send to the typesetter. Now I have a SAM file. I have the three things that I need to do a typeset QC as we see it. I have my InDesign document, I have a PDF, and I have the SAM file. For now, I'm just going to move that SAM file out of my download folder right up here just so everything's kind of together. And with everything in place, now we can go back to the typeset QC list. So again, that's under uh, Welcome Document Workflow, Documentation and types at QC. And you also have the link in the chat over there. Okay. So let's start with the first step. I'm going to open up the PDF. It'll open in Acrobat or maybe Preview if you're on a Mac. And we're going to start just comparing this against things on our checklist. So things like, does the typeset match the design? If you recall, we have a design PDF in our design folder. And that's what I can use to kind of compare it against and say like, oh, okay, you know, you can kind of imagine everything looks the same. I would probably jump to specific things like looking at my chapter openers. When we're looking at this, there might be things we want to check like, is it starting at the same height? Is it on the same place in the page as it is in the design? You know, is it, is it up here or is it in the same spot that it's in the, in the design? I might make things that make other checks, like to make sure that um, that my heads look correct or that my running heads are correct. I can look at the running heads 
and I observe that, okay, my design file, I'll go back to the design file. I'm seeing the title of the book. I'm seeing the chapter number and I'm seeing whatever is the um, A head from earlier on. So, you know, introductory functions or, oh, I'm sorry, this is the chapter number, chapter number or chapter title. If I do the same thing here, I'm gonna compare and say, like, okay, well, the running heads look correct. I'm, it's in the same exact pattern. And just kind of check that throughout, you know, spot check your sidebars to make sure they match the design and that your typesetter didn't misunderstand something and maybe has them sent in the text as opposed to as a separate box, things like that. Um, does the typeset contain all the changes from the previous corrections around? This one's a little hard to check for because you might be looking for things like, you know, did, it, did we make a composition change and it's in the file? So that is more about the context of where your book is at this point. Are the pages present and properly numbered? You might check that as well. Because for example, I may see Roman numerals here indicating that the typesetter didn't put it in proper section breaks to change them from Roman to Arabic numerals. And then is the publication correctly formatted? We have, uh, that refers to the copyright page. You know, there's everything there. Now's the time where you're gonna look for things like missing content. A, a lot of times we'll use text to indicate that uh, something is yet to come. Like I don't have the Library of Congress number right now. I need to place that in somewhere else. Uh, you'll check the table of contents, making sure that all the page numbers are correct that we don't really have right now because we have a lot of placeholder numbers. But now it's a chance for you to actually go through and make sure that they put in the proper page numbers. So very easy to sort of say, like, you know, it says that this is on page two. So in Acrobat, I can go to page two and say like, yep, that's correct. And you'd repeat that process just to make sure everything is correct there. Um, then we go to master page elements. Again, we're checking to make sure the run heads are formatted correctly. And are these elements consistent throughout? That would be, for example, um, like our chapter numbers. You know, is everything here correct? Or is there one, maybe chapter four, it doesn't have this dotted background to it. All of a sudden it's inconsistent. And there's some issue there that we need to communicate to the typesetter. Back to our list. Anything else, any questions so far? Because a lot of it is just kind of verifying that everything's as we expected. We have a design already. Does our book match our design? After that, we dig into typography, uh, checking proper page breaks, making sure that like chapter one uh, doesn't start, for example, here. So we went through that stage earlier on when we were paging the document, breaking everything to make sure it starts on the right page. Now the type QC person is gonna make sure that's correct in their file as well. They're gonna do granular typography checks as well, scanning through every page, looking for looking for stacks, looking for bad breaks. And these are kind of spell out common issues and things that we talked about earlier today. You know, are titles like Mr. and Doctor with the name, are the initials all together? Are there things like one billion or 10 centimeters? Are those numbers and units moving as a group or are they breaking across lines, which could make it a little difficult to read? Does the typeset meet typographical standards? Uh, we have things like loose and tight lines. Are they balancing correctly? You know, do you have a long title that has one short word at the end of it, or has your typesetter kind of balanced the heads correctly? Um, we mentioned this earlier too, our typesets, uh, sidebar and figure sprays properly. That should be a lot of things that if you know what your sidebar looks like from your design sample, and you see sidebar text, you know, somewhere else, or maybe they wrapped an extra table. Um, if you're kind of looking for these mismatches, is everything looking correctly? And then do spreads align. So that refers to things like this, like is the lines or the pages have the proper sync for both or are they a little bit off? The type that I would need to change things if they were a little bit off. Same thing here, like are they, are they landing at the same point? And I'm looking at this bottom line right here. You know, is everything balanced and lined up across the spread? There might be some times where it's okay that they don't. For example, we would consider this to be okay. You can see there's this big gap right here, but it's because there's another head up here. That's typically okay. Output, has the PDF met your printer's requirements? This could depend on where you're printing your book and with how your design is, uh, is set up. I'll point out a couple issues in this book. So uh, your printer may require crop marks um, or they don't. So for example, this is where the paper is going to get trimmed at the printer. 
and we have these full bleed elements that we talked about last week. Um, so if your book has these, we would want to make sure that this red extends beyond the crop mark so that we don't end into, into those issues of maybe it's slicing a little bit off. And now we have these little white gaps everywhere where the color isn't fully extended.